Hey, what's up? My name is Nick Walter and welcome to this little tutorial teaching you how to add touch bar support into your Mac OS apps. And if you're wondering what touch bar is, Apple just announced it. Uh, it's part of their new MacBooks, and essentially it's this touch screen that they put at the top of the keyboard. They replace the function keys and now you can do cool stuff like have this little, you know, slider scrubber thing here. You can have your own custom buttons. You can get to all the different things about setting your brightness and volume, stuff like that. But it this bar can change on depending what kind of app that you're using. So if you're doing like video editing, it looks like this. Uh, if you're doing mail, it has like these types of tools. You can kind of see as you move, the application can change what's showing up inside of that touch bar. So what's really neat is that we as developers can manipulate this. So my purpose is one, teaching you how you can test out this touch bar stuff on your own computer, just get it all up and running. And then the next one is how to add it into an app. And we're gonna make a very simple app. I'll show you what the finished product look like, looks like here. Um, I just went ahead and created this earlier. So this is what we're gonna make in the end. And let me go ahead and bring up the touch bar. Ooh, there it is. I don't have this new uh, MacBook. They're not publicly available, but um, you know you can simulate it here on Xcode, which is really nice. So what we're gonna do is we have this one button that if you click it, we can at least print something out. But we also have this where if we select this color picker, uh, we can change this and whoa, look, we can change the color of the window. So this is ultimately what we're gonna end up building. I just want you to figure out how to add this touch bar stuff into your app and kind of get started. I just wanted to quickly mention before we move forward that this tutorial assumes you have some Mac OS programming experience. If you don't have any, don't worry. I actually just released a course on how to make Mac apps. Uh, I'm really proud of it and I think you'd enjoy it if you're a beginner to this. You can find it if you just go to zappycode.com slash Mac. Uh, I've added a special coupon for you there since you're watching this YouTube video, but this course walks you through how to make Mac apps and will give you the basis that you need to move forward. So assuming that you have that experience, let's go ahead and dive into how to do this. So uh, first things first, in order to run this touch bar simulator stuff in Xcode and program with this, you need Xcode 8.1 and you need Mac OS 10.12.1. And this is a little bit tricky if we go uh, to the Stack Overflow question that I saw earlier because I downloaded uh, the new version of Mac OS, this uh, 10.12.1, and it wasn't working for me. And apparently there's like two different versions of 10.12.1. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, the one that's in the Mac App Store will be the correct one. But if it's not, just go to Stack Overflow and search for NS Touch Bar. Uh, it's going to be one of the only questions on there. This is so brand new. And hopefully past that point, Apple has fixed this. So remember, go to your App Store app, update to Xcode 8.1, and you need to have macOS version 10.12.1 and hopefully something beyond that. But if you are at 10.12.1, make sure it's the correct one. And if it's not working for you, uh, go ahead and check this out, okay? So uh, what we wanna do first is let's see what documentation Apple has for the NS Touch Bar. So let's go ahead and open a new tab and just Google NS Touch Bar. Um, actually, I think the better page for this is if you just search uh, Touch Bar Developer. Okay, I can give you the full URL once it shows up here. It's this developer.apple.com slash macOS slash touch dash bar. Okay, so this just kind of gives you some high level information about uh, what the touch bar can do and how you can get more out of it. Um, but then there's these really useful links down here about how you can integrate this into your app. And it's showing you here, you need that X code 8.1 and this specific version of 10.12.1, okay? Now the next thing uh, that we're gonna have inside of here is uh, a couple of these sample projects. And I think this will be a good way to just make sure you've got the right version and everything is up and running on your computer. So assuming that you have 8.1 in this version of Mac OS, uh, we're gonna go ahead and download this NS Touch Bar catalog, okay? So we're gonna click download sample code. I'll add that to our downloads. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open up one of these, okay? Uh, you can see I've already got one copy of it. You can get to an Objective-C or Swift, which is nice. We'll go ahead and open up this project. Yes, it's from the internet, but it is from Apple. So I'm gonna go ahead and trust it. I'm gonna close out the old project here. But now that we've got this, uh, the whole purpose here is let's just make sure that the touch bar is working for us. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit run on this app. And if you don't have the correct version of Mac OS or Xcode, you're gonna get errors as soon as this thing builds and tries to run. But assuming you have this, that means you're in the right direction. And then to get the touch bar to show up, all you do is you have to go back into Xcode and then inside of Xcode, you say window 
and then show touch bar just like this. So shift command five is the hotkey for it. But you get this to show up and look what happens. So the touch bar is kind of in its regular state. It's, you know, got a, a play and stop for audio, things like that. Or maybe this is for Xcode actually, but you can see if we pull this out, here's all the different controls. Like I can up my brightness, down it, um, you know, set the keys, all this good stuff, mute my audio, whatever. Um, but what's really awesome is that uh, if we go ahead and switch into our app here, whoa, check out this, the touch bar has changed. So I'm gonna kind of move it down here so that we can see, but uh, like as I move into stuff like segmented controls, you can go ahead and see what those look like. That's awesome. So this is kind of a way to test all the different things that you can do with the touch bar. Uh, they show you how to make groups and stuff like that, fancy groups. Here's the one that we're gonna be working with, this color picker. Uh, so you can see, we can go get to all the colors, that good stuff. Um, and there's different kinds. We can have the text color picker, the stroke color picker. You can, can kind of see how the icon changes. Um, just all sorts of awesome stuff that we can grab from here. Look, this kind of shows you the updated values. Um, but it's worth noting that not all of these were, will work unless you have an actual laptop that has this integration, like multi-touch stuff, that doesn't really work. And I think if you try and click on visibility priority, well, these weren't working for me earlier. Looks like they're working now. But some of these examples aren't gonna work perfectly unless you have the actual hardware. But you can see most of it uh, with this simulator here. Okay, so now that we know that this is working, let's go ahead and figure out how we could add this to an app, right? It's all awesome to see the demo. It's like, how do we actually put this uh, into practice? So I'm gonna head, go ahead and close all that out and we are gonna start a new Xcode project. Make sure it's a Mac OS Cocoa application. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit next on that. And for the product name, choose whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this like uh, touch color fun, okay, something dumb like that. Uh, make sure you have use storyboard selected. I'm gonna show you how to add a touch bar uh, using the storyboard. So go ahead and click next on this and then throw that right on your desktop. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can add this touch bar. And Apple has made this really, really easy with storyboards. You can do it programmatically. If you wanna go down that route, check out that sa uh, sample documentation that we just ran through. But uh, if we're gonna go the storyboard route, which I really prefer, um, you can see here, I'm gonna give us a little bit of space. Uh, we've got our you know, window controller, view controller down here, pretty standard. Again, if you don't know about some of this Mac stuff, don't worry, uh, I have that class for you at zappycode.com slash Mac. I'm gonna roll through all this stuff. Um, but once we're here, uh, I mean, there's a ton of things inside of this scroll here for the different objects that you can add. You can try and go down to all the touch bar stuff, or you, I mean, eventually here I got to all of it, but if you just search touch, uh, most all of them are gonna show up here, okay? So what we wanna do first is add a touch bar into our app, and we wanna add it onto this window controller. It's really important that we add it to the window controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and click drag this right onto the window controller, and you can see it just kinda pops up as one of the items here in the window controller. And let's put something really simple in there. Let's just put a button. So I'm gonna scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to grab the touch bar button, and I'm just gonna select and click drag this over here. And you can see my button shows up here on the left. And you know, if you want to, you can like uh, double click this, change the title, just say something like, hello, um, I don't know, whatever you want. But now we have this button in there. So let's go ahead and run our app and see if this is showing up. So we'll go ahead and hit the run button. Here we go, build succeeded. And here's my window. Remember, we've gotta get the touch bar to show up by going to Xcode and then saying window, show touch bar. So here it is, this is the touch bar for Xcode, but if I bring up our app, whoa, there's our hello button, right? Pretty sweet stuff. Now you may be wondering, how can I detect when someone's you know, tapped on this button uh, that we created here and added to our touch bar? Well, uh, we can bring over an action just like we would for any other button or something, but we can't do it on the view controller level. We have to do it with this window controller, which means right now we don't have a code version of this window controller. Uh, we've gotta go make that. So I'm gonna right click here, say new file. Uh, we want a Cocoa class in Mac OS and it should be a subclass of, oh, I already have it, NS Window Controller, and I'm just gonna call it My Window Controller or something like that. Pretty pretty dumb name, but we're just trying to 
get through stuff here, okay? So in Swift, that's good, we'll hit next. Oh, I'm gonna go back, we do not need a zib for this, so uncheck that. Okay, hit next, and we will add this into our project. Okay, so now we have this My Window Controller, we can now go back to main.storyboard, and uh, we can come up to our window controller, select it, and then on this little newspaper guy say, you know what, this class is actually my window controller. So now that all this stuff is uh, combined together, I'm gonna do command build, and let's do a split screen so that we can kind of drag some stuff over. I'm gonna give us some space so that we can work a few things out over here. So what we wanna do is select this button, and uh, you'll notice like a touch bar button has a lot of things inside of it. It has its own view controller, and then it has a button, and then it has like the button cell, all this good stuff. We want to get this actual button right here, okay? If we bring back the side menu, you can see at the end of the day, this thing is an NS button. Uh, and this split screen should say, if we click the automatic thing, we want this My Window Controller, so let's go ahead and choose that. And all we do is do our control drag, just like we would any other time, and we can bring it over as an action. So got to specify an action, but I'm going to say here, uh, button tapped. Now what's so funny about this to me is when I was doing iOS work, whenever I bring over a button action, I always mistakenly typed, you know, button clicked when it should be tapped, right? In iOS, you're tapping things. And when I did Mac programming, I always got confused because I was so used to saying tapped. I was like, no, now we're actually clicking. But now that we've got this touch bar stuff, like there's clicking and there's touching. So it's all complicated here, but we're going to have button tapped. Uh, as the name for this. You can name it whatever you want, but that's what I'm doing. So let's just say inside of this action, something like print, uh, hello world, okay, exclamation point. And let's see if we can't get this thing to work. So up comes our app here. And while we've got it selected, you can see on our touch bar, there's the button. I hit this button and boom. Look down here in uh, the console, we can see hello world showing up every single time that we click that, okay? Now the question is, how can we change it so that uh, you know we can have the color picker in there and we can change the background of this? Well, let's go back to our storyboard. I'm gonna go full screen again and move down this touch bar. It's really annoying to have a touch bar when you don't actually have the touch bar on your computer because it's just this thing that's always there right on top of stuff, but it is fun to work with. So we'll bring back this right side menu and now we wanna go ahead and grab this touch bar color picker. There's a ton of other cool things in here like uh, the character picker, we've got scrubber stuff, and you can put these things in groups. You can have like sort of a pop-up. A view controller is not the right word, but its own little like, you know, menu after you've tapped one of those. Um, but let's go ahead and select this uh, color picker, and we're just going to drag it right into our touch bar. And you can see by default, it kind of hugs up right next to the other one. And if you ever want to center something, uh, go ahead and pick the touch bar item, for the, in this case, the color picker. And if you go to the attributes inspector, if you click this is principal item, whoosh, look at that, it puts it right in the middle. So let's go ahead and hit run, see what this looks like. Okay, build succeeds. And you can see uh, our color picker is right in the middle, but it's all grayed out and it doesn't allow us to do anything, which is a bit of an issue for us. We've got to definitely go fix that. So let's go back to our storyboard here and let's bring this button over as an outlet. We've got to set a few things up inside of it before it's going to show up and we can start you know, manipulating it and working with it. So uh, now that we've got this color picker, let's do our split screen one more time. And remember, I want to bring this over as an outlet, not an action. So I'm going to do control drag right into here and I'm just gonna call it my color picker. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna come back and make this thing full screen. Let's get to this window controller. And uh, you can see that we're gonna have an error in here, and this is something that's gonna happen over and over. So because this is something new to Mac OS 12, 10.12.1, um, we just need to add this little thing above or anytime we're referencing this to say, hey, you know, uh, this is only available if we're doing this stuff. So um, if we kind of put this over the whole class, this says, you know, only do this if it's available here. But uh, this is a little bit dangerous because then this means that this app can only run uh, if you are running this specific version, right? You kind of space out all your other users. So just kind of preface there. But um, now that we've got that inside of our uh, window did load, we can kind of set up this color picker. So for the color picker, the main thing that we want to change here is 
uh, color picker dot is enabled and we want to set that to true. I don't know why default it isn't already set uh, to true, uh, but that's definitely something we've got to fix. So you'll notice just by doing this one thing, uh, here comes our app. Look, now we can select this, pick colors, whatever, go into this rainbow stuff, awesome. But then the question is, how can we bring this back you know, into our app and actually do something with it? Well, uh, we can set two different things here. So with the color picker, we've got to first give it a target to say, hey, if, you know, when someone selects a color, where should we send the message, what object? So that's the target. We're gonna say color picker.target is equal to self. And then we're gonna say color picker dot action. And this is the specific you know, function that we want it to call, okay? We're gonna say the action is equal to, um, and this is where we're gonna say hashtag selector, okay? And then we can pass some method in here. Well, we have to make a method or function first. So I'm gonna say func uh, color picked. All right, and uh, we're not gonna take in any parameters. If you did take in a parameter, it would be uh, the color picker, but we already have access to it here as an outlet. So we're just gonna go ahead for the name here and say, all right, the action that you should call is color picker, just like that. And let's, for the time being, print out uh, once this color picker is called, um, we're gonna access this color picker, say color picker dot color, okay? And that'll tell us what color they picked. Um, now we're getting a bit of an error here saying, is this the getter or the setter? Hmm, I think this is the getter. Oh, that's because, no, the wrong name here. I want color picked, not color picker. So let's see, color picked is what we're looking for. That's why it was being all funky. I'm like, what is, what is this getter setter stuff about? But let's go ahead and hit run. App opens up. Okay, I hit this color thing here and look as I select something, down here in my console, oh, look at that, it's got a color. And as I move it across, it shows all the different colors. I can just uh, you know, pick one specific thing if I want to, but it, we can see that that's working. So the last piece of information here is just making it so that we can convert that color into changing uh, you know, this view controller's uh, view or whatever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say self.viewcontentviewcontroller. Thank you, autocomplete, that saved me. Content view controller dot view dot layer dot, and we wanna set its background color. Okay, and we're gonna set this equal to exactly what we pulled out here, the color picker dot color. So we're gonna say color picker dot color uh, dot, and then we need to change it to a CG color because this background color is looking for a CG color. Color picker gives you uh, an NS color. So. Let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. Build succeeds, up opens the app, and I'm like, yo, what, I want the background to be green. Now it's green, woo, check that out. I mean, what? how long have we been going? Like 10 minutes or something like this? We are already up and running with the touch bar. So shout out to Apple for how uh, simple they made this. Obviously, this touch bar stuff can get much, much more complicated than this, but these are kind of the basics that you need to get at least the minimum into your app so that uh, users can take advantage to this. Uh, I'd just like to remind you again that I have uh, a Mac course. If you're interested in it, just go ahead and go to zappycode.com slash Mac. You can see I've already got the coupon loaded in for you there. Uh, would love to have you as a student. We make some really cool apps in there. We make a to-do list app. Uh, we make a status bar item app that kind of goes up here at the top that works with the clipboard. That one's pretty interesting. We make a podcast player, uh, which is really intense, takes a lot of work, but uh, is pretty fun to make. And then the last one is we make a command line tool. So something that you can run straight from terminal. In fact, uh, if you want to see what that one does, it goes and gets the weather from somewhere. So on my computer now, if I say weather and I want to know the weather in like Tokyo, Japan, Okay, I just enter this and boom, apparently it's 56 degrees in Tokyo right now. So anyways, thank you so much for checking out the tutorial. I'd love to have you in the course. I hope I helped you out with your touch bar stuff and have a great, great day.